Hey, in this video, I'm gonna be giving a really detailed breakdown of my income streams as a professional photographer. Now, I'm not gonna tell you how much money I have in the bank, um, because one, I don't think it's useful because a thousand pounds in Leicester is not the same as a thousand pounds in London, which is not the same as a thousand pounds in Tokyo or Brazil. It's a very different thing. And two, I'm British and we don't talk about money like that. This is as far as we go until we start feeling awkward and going red faced. I'm gonna give you a percentage breakdown and I'm gonna start at the very beginning, the smallest amount. And if you see me looking down here, it's because I've got a, a little pie chart I've made. And if you see me looking everywhere else being very concerned, it's because my kitten is in the studio running around like a lunatic. So first up, less than 1% of my income is made from this, YouTube. Um, now, I've actually doctored those figures slightly and gone from what I'm currently getting per month and multiplied that by 12 rather than going in hindsight because obviously I made no money at all. But it's a very small amount. It doesn't actually add up to 1% even with doctoring the numbers. But I wanted to put it in there because I know a lot of people think there's a lot of easy money to be made doing this. One, there's not. Two, yes, you can make money, but you have to build up a big channel. And to be honest, that's not something I've got the time to do nor, nor than want to do. I don't particularly want to spend most of my time making YouTube videos. I like making videos for things I can't find information from online. When people ask me and I go, yeah, that, that doesn't exist, I'll, I'll put a video together for that. That's sort of where this comes in for me. It's sort of a hobby more than anything, just so it happens that I'm a photographer as well. So it's an easy hobby to get on board with. Okay, so next up is my writing. Now, my writing varies a lot from doing one article every two weeks to doing 10 articles a week. I have a scalable writing option here. I write for some websites like F-Stoppers, Petapixels. I write for some print magazines. I write for brands for paid editorials, whatever it may be. And some of these people ask for so many articles at a time or one article at a time. Others let me write as much as I want when I've got no shooting on or like during the pandemic lockdown. I'd be writing a lot because it's a good way to make money and it's on my own terms, in my own time, I write what I want, how I want it. And I don't really have to answer to anybody, which is like my dream. Then we have my background business, which is 6%, slightly more than writing. Um, now don't then all go rushing to tinhousebackgrounds.com because there's about five backgrounds left. I can't get new ones made during the pandemic because my printers has closed down due to the lockdown. And they're the only people I trust to do it. It's, it's a, I won't go into it. I'm gonna do a separate video on this at some point because when we are all back up and running, I'm gonna show exactly what I've been doing with these. It's been like a soft launch where I've not really told people and I've just sort of let them go out. I mean, they've mostly been shipping to America and Nordic countries. Um, so I'm glad I did the worldwide shipping option because I very nearly didn't. But that's a small percentage. It's something I want to grow in the future, but at the same time, I need to bring someone in to look after that for me because there's only so many hours in the day and there's only one of me. Then we have my rentals and my workshops both coming in at 7% a piece. So my rentals are things like renting the studio out, renting kit out, cameras, lenses, whatever it might be, that's 7% of my income. And my workshops, that might be running workshops in here, which I will not be doing until not only the government say it's safe to do so, but when I also think it's safe to do so. So I believe that we could probably do them pretty soon but I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be hanging on until I see whether a second wave of the virus is gonna happen. Anyway, boring stuff. Um, but it's also talking at universities, talking at brands, going in to give conferences, to give sort of careers advice, motivation, whatever it may be, I do that as well. And that's a very small percentage, so it's 7% for that, 7% that's 14%. But when you add all of these little bits up, it adds up to 26% of my income. And a lot of these have very low overheads. Writing has an incredibly low overhead. All I need is something to type on. And I have all this stuff anyway because of my other career. I mean, all of these things, apart from the backgrounds and the studio, uh, are pretty self-sustainable. And the importance of this, and the sort of reason I'm doing this video is because if it wasn't for this 26%, right now, I would be so stressed. I can't shoot bed campaigns. I can't have a crew in here. We can't go out and buy food easily. You know, I can't spend six hours going to five different supermarkets because one, it will take more than six hours and two, the risk isn't worth it. So having these smaller income streams that make very little amounts of money per stream are very useful, especially in times like this. And that leaves 74% for my photography and I'm gonna get into more detail in this. So I went through this, I was like, that's good. Make a good chunk of money with my photography. It's a viable business. That's my cat purring in the background, if you can hear that. She's, she's very vocal. Um, she's looking at me like, anyway. Out of the 74%, one second, this is Moggy. So out of the 74%, 95% of it was made in three days of work. And I think this is very relevant and very interesting because 
Yes, I do a lot more days. I haven't actually calculated how many days I did, but I reckon it'll be about 150. You okay there? Oh, she wants to go down. She's gone. So after the 150 days of shooting, only three of them were really like worth doing. And I say worth doing, that's purely from a monetary value. But I think I'm just watching her walking precariously through my camera bag. That's going to backfire, isn't it? But out of all of those days shooting, I could have only done the three and spent the rest of the time doing portfolio work, which perhaps would have been a better... This is not going well. She's now climbing up my legs. So those three days would have been enough to carry me through the year. I didn't have to do the other hundred and so days shooting. But there's a few reasons why I do. One is because I love my job. Two, it's always good to try new challenges and you never know where these things are going to lead. One of the smallest jobs I did a few years ago actually led me on to the biggest job of this year or the 12 month block I'm talking about. So it's always a tough one, but it also means I have the option to go, do you know what? You look like a nightmare. I don't particularly want to work with you. If your fee for the job doesn't reach this level, it's not, it's not important to me monetarily, financially. So she spotted the tinfoil reflector down here. So I think, you know, having that little buffer is really important. So what's the point in all of this? Well, firstly, I think it's interesting to see how a photographer makes their money today, because back in the 90s, it would have been purely from taking images. So I think it's interesting to see how the modern photographer makes their money. A lot of people think it's all Instagram and YouTube, and for me personally, it's definitely not. For some, it, it really is. And I don't think that makes you any less a photographer if that's the way that you make your income. You know, I, I don't think that we have to fit a set career path. But at the same time, for me, I think the importance is to make sure that you have income streams that are not specifically, you know, photography, so that when things like this pandemic or in the UK, we've got Brexit coming up straight after a pandemic, which is going to be great. You know, when these things do play out, you've got these things to fall back on. So it's not just plunging through your savings, but you can also go, well, I've got the savings there, but I've also got this income coming in here. Some of it's passive, some of it's work that I can scale up and scale down and it's on my terms, and that's going to keep me afloat. So I hope this video has been interesting to you, and if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Now, if you do want to know about pricing, how much to charge, who at what level, I've got a series of videos on that. Head over to my channel, hit subscribe, and I'm gonna be constantly adding more sort of business advice. Hang on, she's back. I'm never doing a video again with a cat in the studio. Become a bit soft.